Welcome to Ramen Cousins. We're cousins and we like ramen. My name is Caleb Griffin. My name is Colton Merchant. And this is Next Topic Media. Click that subscribe, click that like button, even if you don't like this video, which you should. You definitely you should. Today, we're going to be eating ramen and talking about a cool topic. What type of ramen you got today, Colton? Today, I've whipped out the pork ramen. Haven't had the pork ramen in a while. I saw it today while I was grocery shopping and decided to pick up a few packs. How about yourself, Caleb? I got the classic chicken. Everybody loves the classic chicken. Nothing wrong some, with the classic chicken. Add some Tony Sachery seasoning in there. Mm. It should be illegal how cheap this stuff is and how good it tastes. If only everything was like like this. Like ramen. <laughs> Ramen. Speaking of things that are like ramen, we get to talk about a banger of a movie today. Yep. That movie, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. What a movie. Tom Cruise, I, I personally think it's the best action movie star in the world. I mean, what, what possibly? What other guys jumping off a cliff with a motorcycle for the shot? Not many, but that guy. Yeah, there's not many spy movies that I don't like, but Mission Impossible... Like, the whole franchise is something I just really can get into. But, I will have to admit, I haven't seen every movie. Really? I know. It's a tough it's a tough pill to swallow, but that's just the whole truth of it. And, I don't keep up with the movies either. So, this, seeing this movie was the first Mission Impossible movie I've seen since Fallout came out in theaters. And that was like, four years ago almost. Mm -hmm. I will say, this is my favorite spy series of all time. Favorite, unless super, superhero movies count as action, which they probably do. My favorite action movie series of all time. Um, I love Ethan Hunt as a character. They surround him with incredible characters as well. And this is just another great installment, the seventh movie in the franchise. Uh, this movie's doing very good in the box office, doing very good with reviews and with critics, and for good reason, because... It's a great movie. It is a great movie. But some scenes in the movies that really stuck out to me. There was an airport scene. Um, Ethan Hunt running through the airport. And he's got his crew. I keep forgetting their names. Uh, Luther and Benji. Yeah, Luther and Benji. We got Luther hacking, hacking for him. We got Benji on the comms. I mean, it's yeah. just classic Mission Impossible classic. stuff. And it's just... And it's it, really fun to see. Scenes like that are so cool to think about how much planning and choreography went into those, those shots because he had to turn a corner like every two seconds to avoid seeing somebody and adding the pit pocket element into the into the whole, mix into that whole scene. That scene was, in my opinion, one of the best scenes, if not the best we've seen in the Mission Impossible series. It was it was incredible. In this movie, we're introduced to a new character. Her name's Grace. And she's played by Haley Atwell. Y'all might recognize her as Peggy Carter from the Avengers movies. Yes. Fantastic actress. Fantastic actress. Fantastic I mean, actress. it's really a shame I don't see her more mm -hmm. in more films, but Haley Atwell is a very beautiful lady, a very wonderful actor. Or actor. So this is my second favorite movie I've seen her in. The first being Christopher Robin. She plays Christopher Robin. She did play in Christopher Robin. I looked yeah. her up the other night just to see what other movie she was in. Right. And I haven't seen Christopher Robin yet, but I saw that Haley Atwell was in it. I was so like, good. I'm going to have to see it. Christopher Robin is a banger of a movie. That's my favorite movie she's in. This is my favorite role she has played, and that includes that movie. Oh, no. This... And Peggy Carter. Her character was awesome. Her character was so great. Cool. It, was, it was someone you could just follow along with. Like, So she was a thief. Not her character, but she wasn't annoying about her thieving. I mean, when I kind of think of her as a thief, I think back to the previous movie we had watched not too long ago, Indiana Jones. Yeah. It's like two completely different thieves. Um, the main main protagonist in Indiana Jones, the daughter of um, Indy's friend. Yeah. I don't she, she was a thief, but she was annoying as all get out. Um, just wasn't... Wasn't the type of thief you want to see on film. Just like someone you couldn't root for. And Haley Atwell's character, Grace, was not that character. No, you, you just to wanted her to win. It's crazy to me how actors and actresses can like pick up skills like for, for certain films. Like you hear all this stuff about Margot Robbie learning to hold her breath for like however long it was for Suicide Squad and uh, 
Tom Cruise learning how to fly fighter jets and all that stuff, and seeing Haley Atwell learn how to do pit like pit pocket and do the pit pocketing with and fingers and slide of hands Dude, was sick. Oh man, her like, and able to learn that? Tom Cruise did that. I think that's so impressive. But the slide of hand magic stuff, yeah. like just twirling the finger, um, twirling the keys and hiding things, like it's really yeah, that, cool. That, to that see. stuff is so impressive to me, and I just think it's cool that they were able to find an actress who won. Can, is a crazy good actress can do all the action scenes keep up with Tom Cruise and still be able to do cool stuff like that and really add to the movie next thing I want to talk about in this movie is the uh, uh, alleyway scene the fight scene uh, so these two goons that are working for the bad guy um, they enclose uh, Tom Cruise in this alley and close these two fences so it's a very very narrow little alley one of them has a lead pipe and the other tom cruise has nothing to fight with or ethan hunt i should say has nothing to fight with and that is one of the best choreographed uh fight scenes i've seen in a long time the cinematography was really good i mean i think the fact that we've gotten this movie and john wick for this year with all the insane action, i know action it's, sequences it's really insane. putting in perspective like, like dude. hate to compare it to marvel movies but like Pick I mean, up, for man. super for superhero movies, they rely on superpowers, and mm -hmm. you know it's kind of hard for them to like even attempt to choreograph a good fight. But watching John Wick four, and then now watching Mission Impossible with these incredible choreograph um, choreographed stunts and um, yes, man, I, and fights. I mean, it's just amazing. I'm so in your wavelength right now. Now the fact that Tom Cruise does his own stunts is insane. I went and watched an interview with the director where they were showing like. Uh, the actual stunt so they were on an actual side of a mountain which I didn't know and they just built a ramp for him to, <laughs> to <laughs> launch off mountain. yeah and then they were showing up actually doing it I was like holy crap the man actually <laughs> motorcycle jumped off a mountain I mean it's no secret that he jumps off this yeah. mountain but like hearing hearing um all these interviews about how Tom Cruise just jumps off the mountain it's like and I haven't read anything about him like taking multiple takes but like oh, Tom Cruise is the type of guy it's like he's like that was, that was good, but we could do better. So he you is. know he had four or five motorcycles on standby it's, to launch off like, a cliff. He jumps off a cliff one time. Nah, I don't want that take. Let's do it again. And this is, I think that's so, that's sick, man. And that was, that was the motorcycle jump or the cliff jump was actually the first scene they shot in filming because they wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way. And they said it took like months of planning to like, they had to build like a replica of the ramp. Uh, in a studio and then harness or on a smaller mountain and harness Tom Cruise up so he wasn't actually diving off so mm -hmm. he could like ride the motorcycle off the ramp and see where they needed to station all the cameras and stuff beforehand and just hearing all that planning stuff and the stuff the, the amount of effort it took it, that went into this movie was just absurd and it was done very well and I really enjoyed this movie and it was and not only stunts but acting the, the plot as a whole, um, the villain, everything in this movie was done very, very well. All, all good things to say about it. I, I agree with Caleb here. There's nothing really, there's nothing really hurting this movie much. I will say, there was some lazy writing. There was. There was some lazy writing in some in some of these scenes. Um, and the, the beginning shot, we're in the desert. Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt's escaping these these um. Bounty hunters. These bounty hunters yeah. on horses, and they're all shooting at them with guns. But it's like he should have been dead. You, you, you're dead, bro. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if you can't see in like sandstorm, and you're bouncing on a horse shooting a gun. It's like you got like ten people shooting yeah. at you, and you're on a horse. And yeah, to add on to the lazy riding, there's always stuff in Mission Impossible. There's that you're just like, there's no way he survives that. Like that's kind of the point. Ethan Hunt gets lucky a lot. Um, this movie did kind of take that to an extreme with his luck. Yeah. He, he got lucky a lot. And they do show some scenes where he gets out of situations and we just don't see how he does it. Yeah, there was a lot of close call cuts, as you called it, last night. And I'm okay with maybe a couple in a movie, but there were just some in this movie that made me mad. And I'm like, really? Like, that's just kind of... You're basically saying that we couldn't figure out how to make it look like he survived, so we just did this close call. Cut. There was some lazy but, writing that makes the movie funnier. Like, mm -hmm. there was a scene where me and Caleb were watching it last night, and, <laughs> and Ethan Hunt just stumbles on into the action, and it's... You, you perfect, didn't expect perfect, perfect timing. timing. Stumbles into the action. 
just keeps the bad guy at bay. But it's just it's just so funny to see. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, that that, that, that couldn't have gone any better. They, it's kind of we kind of talked about how they wrote up very, they wrote the uh, story very well up until the motorcycle jump. And they're like, now that we got the motorcycle jump, what do we do now? It's like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's like Tom Cruise like, oh, I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> it's we like, just wanted this shot. <laughs> so there was some flaws with the movie. Um, it wasn't, you know, perfect. I think as great of, as great of a movie as it was, the 90s eight audience and critic score is just a little too high in my opinion. But um, that's my opinion. I understand why people love this movie and why it's being like called the greatest Mission Impossible movie. It's, it's very, I mean, it's very possible it could be one of the greatest Mission Impossible movies. I'm not saying it's the best. Of course, yeah. I haven't seen all of them, so I wouldn't know which one is the best. But, like, comparing it to Fallout, it's way better than Fallout. I agree, it's way better than Fallout. I, didn't, I wasn't a fan of Fallout, though. Now that we've concluded talking about this movie, a great movie score um, from our end, let's get into a segue we like to call Steamy Noodles Hot Takes. A segue. A little segue. A little segue. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. We're basically going to give a hot take about the topic of discussion for each episode. Today's topic, obviously, Mission Impossible. You had a very interesting hot take. I had a pretty interesting hot take. I think the public's going to be very curious to hear. So, Mission this Mission Impossible, this movie, Dead Reckoning, it has it's a part one movie. Part one of two. So, next year we'll see part two. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is also a part one movie. And... In my opinion, Mission Impossible was a better part one movie than Spider-Man. Not saying it was a better movie overall, but if you're doing a part one movie and that needs to be finished up with a part two next year, I feel like Mission Impossible did it better. Okay, I get where you're coming from. I just wholeheartedly disagree. So that's that's why it's a hot take. And here's my hot take uh, in regards to this movie. This is not the best Mission Impossible movie ever. This really isn't a hot take as much as this is a warm take. This is not the best Mission Impossible movie. It's not the second best Mission Impossible movie. It might slide into the third best Mission Impossible movie. But Mission Impossible 3, in my opinion, still remains the best, followed by Rogue Nation. And then it's a fight between this one and Mission Impossible 1 for the third spot. This will probably get the take over the first one, considering the first one was in the 90s and the action wasn't as good and the effects weren't as good. I do think the story in the first one was slightly better, um, but I don't know. It's not this huge 98% fan score that it's getting. It's not just an absolute incredible spy movie. It is a great spy movie. Mm -hmm. Not incredible. That's my warm take. That's respectable, you know. Uh, I feel like it's hard to judge where you put this movie when you're ranking it because it's a part one movie. That's fair as well. You, you can't you can't firmly place this anywhere until you see part two mm -hmm. and then kind of see how it concludes. So yeah, you got any final thoughts about Dead Reckoning Part One? I'm excited to see part two. I as well. It it ended it ended well. I thought I thought it was a good ending for a part one movie. That's why I say it's better than Spider Man's ending. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Caleb Griffin. And I'm Colton Merchant. Stay on the lookout for the next episode of Ramen Cousins, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Click that like button. Make sure to subscribe to Next Topic Media for more content like this. Let's get to 500 by the end of the month. 500.